Hello, first certificate. How are you? Welcome to class number six. This is Diana again, and I am here to lead you through to today's class. Um, I am going to start by opening the virtual classroom. I hope you will have time to do homework. Since we are locked up, I assume you did. Last class you worked with Belen and she asked you to do some homework. You had to do an online writing. Um, if you have sent it, be patient. Your teacher will correct it and will give you the necessary feedback. Then you had an online homework practicing the multiple choice activity. And then you had to work on the exam maximizer page number 10, 10, sorry. You also had an online listening on page number four, if I'm not mistaken, please do homework. This is the perfect time to be up to date with your tasks. So I am going to page number 10. Okay, here I am. You had to work on the whole page. The first activity is on grammar, would and used to, to talk about habits in the past. You had to read the extracts about music and cross out the incorrect verb form in each sentence. That's important because you had some options and you had to cross out the incorrect one. So, in number one, we have two possibilities. Which is the incorrect one in your opinion? Throughout history, parents would, did or used. Did is the incorrect one. We can say parents would make or parents used to make. They used to make sure their children had classical music lessons from a young age. Some parents did or used to do are the correct ones. Had used to do is not correct. Past perfect doesn't make any sense in this case because we are referring to having and that's not the use of past perfect. Some parents some parents did or some parents used to do this because they thought it was a it was good for mental discipline. Others believed, used to believe, or would believe. Okay, would believe is the incorrect one. Remember, believe is a study verb. It's not an action. Others believed or used to believe that knowledge of important works of classical music was part of a good general education. Any questions about this? I am going to allow some seconds so you can ask in the chat. Number two, classical music has regularly featured in pop culture and has often been used as background music for movies, television programs, and advertisements. As a result, many people, okay, are used to, or have got used to, regularly and often unknowingly listening to classical music. Okay. Why? Can you explain in the chat why would is not correct? Okay. What about it? Good. Remember, we cannot um, use would to talk about a past state. We can only use it for past habits. I am going to remind you that on your course book, you have got the Rama reference. Yes, I am on page 168 in your course book. There you have more information about this grammar topic and also in the course book. 
yes, in, in the pages that you dealt with in the previous class. So, as a result, many people are used to, or have got used to, regularly and often unknowingly listening to classical music. This means that people who didn't use to, wouldn't, or hadn't used to buy classical music. What do you think is the incorrect one? What about it? Yes, again, no need to use past perfect in this case. This means that people who didn't use to or wouldn't buy classical music have actually been enjoying it without even realizing. Good, good job. Okay, let's correct activity number two. Sentences one to six below each have a word missing. Complete the sentences with the words in the box. You had to do this, remember? When I was a child, I used, okay, I used to, um, it's very, okay, I used, I'm going to put it here. I used to hate classical music, but I loved rock. Every time I went to a concert, I would buy, I would buy a t-shirt to remind me of it. Is it, is it clear where you should put it? I would buy there in the middle. Number three, my brothers used to go here, used to go to, a foot, to football matches instead of coming to rock concerts with me. Number four, after a while, I got used to going to music events on my own. Number five, my mother could not get used to me doing different things from my brothers. Number six, now I think she's got used to it. Okay? Any questions? I think this one was easy, right? Okay, then you had to work on oops sorry on the use of english activity you had to rewrite the sentences without changing their meaning keeping the same idea using the word you are given and also making sure you write between two and five words including including the word given i lived in london when i was a child but now i live in paris so I live in Paris now, but I used to live in London. Okay? When I lived in London, I went to the music shop on the corner every Saturday. Every Saturday, I would, sorry, I would go to the music shop on the corner when I lived in London. Remember, between two and five words, including the word given, in this case it was word, and you cannot change the meaning, of course, you have to keep the same meaning. Questions? No? Yes? Teacher in the chat? Number three. It's become easy for me to sing live as I do it so much. Sorry about that. I've got used to singing live as I do it so much. Good. I've got used to singing live. Remember, when we use this structure, we need to use an ING form after to. That's important. I find watching TV quite relaxing in the evenings. Watching TV, what? Makes me feel relaxed in the evening. Careful with that, remember. The way it is and the way you feel, good. Makes me feel relaxed in the evenings. I don't go to live concerts very often, very often. I hardly ever go to live concerts. Remember that frequency adverb, 
hardly ever, meaning not much, not usual. Last but not least, I only found your message by chance when I was looking for something else. I came across your message by accident when I was looking for something else. We uh, discussed this phrasal verb when we worked with the um, with the reading, yes, when we worked with the tribes reading to come across something, to find something by chance, not planned. Okay, great. Homework correction process is over. I am going to allow some seconds. So if you have any questions, you can ask the teacher in the chat. Yes. Now we can say that we have come to the end of unit number one with Belen last class. You worked on the informal email and you also worked on completing, completing the unit review. So today we'll start with a new unit, that is number two. I am going to open the virtual classroom. So you have finished the five lessons for unit one and today we are going to start unit two as we have been doing in class number six, that is today's class, you have the detail here of everything we are going to be doing. This is everything we are going to be doing today. We are going to be working on uh, a personality quiz, word formation, adjectives and adverbs, and this is going to be homework for today. Of course, you have got the resources we are going to have because many of you don't have the book yet. So you can open the course book pages. In this file, you have the four page, uh, five pages actually that we are going to use today on the same link. Mm -hmm. This is from the course book. And you also have the pages that you are going to need from the exam maximizer, that is pages 12, 13 and 14. Everything is on the link. So take um, this time to download this. I think that will make things much easier for you. Remember, it's not necessary that you print them, okay? Uh, you can just look at them at the computer and then write your answers on a sheet of paper. But I think it is going to be much easier if you have all the material on the computer. So you can zoom in, zoom out, do whatever you need to. Okay, so let's get started. In the course book pages bunch, we are going to start working on page 16, that is the beginning of the unit. Here I am. Relative values. This is the beginning of the unit. This is the unit we are going to be working with today. Relative values. When you think about relatives, who comes to your mind? Give me other synonyms for relatives. When we talk about relatives, we basically refer to our family. Sometimes we consider friends family as well, right? How do you think your friends would describe your personality? Wow, that's an interesting question. And when I give you my answer, I want you to write yours in the chat. Well, my friends definitely consider me very moody. I am a moody person sometimes, very intense and strict with myself and others around me. But I definitely think they also consider me fun because they are always eager to celebrate my birthday, and, and hang out with me and my family. So 
I also think they they see me as fun. What about you? And what about the second question, guys? What personality characteristics do you share with other members of your family? Well, I think um, my father and I are quite alike. I would absolutely, con yeah, I affirm that I take after my father. Remember that phrase ever? We learned it in unit one. Take after when you have similar characteristics, not only physically, but also in terms of personality. Who do you take after in your family? This is this phrase I've already seen in my map, in, if you want to, to know where I took it from. Okay, on this page now we have got a personality quiz that I want you to I want you to do. You have uh, some questions and options to choose as answers. How likely are you to start a conversation with a stranger? stranger how possible it is that you start a conversation with a stranger very likely very possible mm, quite likely neither likely nor unlikely neutral quite unlikely or very unlikely mm, well in my case quite unlikely yeah unless we are in a teaching context in that case i am always um, starting conversations out of the blue number two how likely are you to give advice to other people well quite likely again being a teacher you are always dealing with these situations uh, while i do my quiz you do yours okay how likely are you to use difficult words no i'm not that kind of person how likely are you to change your mind about things? <sighs> Difficult one. I would like to say this one, the one in the middle, mm, but I have to be honest with myself. It's difficult to make me change my mind. I, I, I am very stubborn. How likely are you to organize social events? Uh, yeah. I like having people over at home. I don't know if a social event, but having people over, I like it. How likely are you to worry about being late? Oof, very. Mm. I don't know if I worry because I'm never late. I, I try to be respectful with other others people's other people's time, but I worry. I take care of it. So I would say very likely. Okay, I hope you have done yours. Now we are going to count how many of each of these we have. I have one very likely, two very quite likely, one of the neutral ones, two quite unlikely and nothing here. Okay, so these are my results. I have one, two, I'm going to show you. You are supposed to do the same with yours. Now, to check our results, we are going to open the same book on page 157. Course book, page 157. If you have downloaded the PDF files that you have in the virtual classroom, then in that punch, it's just the next page. If you are in the PDF file, it's just the next page. Look, 157, just right there. And I am going to walk through, walk you through uh, the analysis of your results. This quiz is going to give us 
three pieces of information. First, how sociable you are, then how organized you are, and then how creative you are, right? So, to figure out how sociable you are, we have to add the scores for questions one and five. In question, in question one, I chose quite unlikely. So for question one, I get, not, not very useful, I think. For question one then, I chose quite unlikely, so that's two points. And for question five, I chose very likely, so I got I get five points. Two plus five, seven. So for sociability, I got seven points. This is how sociable I am. This is me, because I got question one, two points. Question five, five points. So according to this, my sociability is the first. You are adventurous and sociable. You enjoy going out and meeting new people. You are confident and fun and fun to be with, but you get bored easily. Mm, yes, I must say that I feel identified, no doubt. What about you? Uh, how much did you get for sociability? So for sociability, you add the scores for questions one and five. And here you have how much each answer is worth. So tell me in the chat if you agree with what you get. Do you feel identified? Does the description represent you? Okay, how organized you are. Well, I don't need a quiz to tell me that. I know how organized I am. Uh, for this, you add scores for question two. For question two, I chose quite likely. And question six, uh, one, for question six, I, I got very likely. So five points. Really? No, there must be a mistake. Only five points for organization. I'm the queen of organization. But you are a bit of both. Read both descriptions to find out more. Mm, okay. You are organized and practical. You like to be in charge. You are very good at getting things done, but you find it difficult to relax. Well, definitely. On the other hand, I am also relaxed and spontaneous now. You don't like to plan ahead. Yes, I do. You think there are more important things than being on time and meeting deadlines. No, absolutely not. You are a liar. What about you guys? Where are you in the quiz? Are you organized or not? Okay. Share your answers with your teacher. And what about your teacher, if it's not me? <laughs> okay, let's see creativity. How creative you are. Uh, for creativity, we add questions three and four. For question three, I got in the middle here, three points. And for question four, I am here. Again, I get five points. Again, in the middle. Oh, how boring. Yeah. Again, you're a bit of both. You are imaginative and creative. You're always full of ideas. You prefer to look at the big picture rather than focusing on detail. And also, you are thoughtful and realistic. I think so. You pay attention to detail, yes. You're cautious when making decisions. You always see both sides of the argument. I think I feel more identified with this one. Yeah, definitely. And you? Can you share your answers? I am very interested in what you think. Do you agree with the descriptions about yourself? Okay, interesting quiz, right? I liked it. Well, let's move on. Well, as you may have noticed, there are a lot of adjectives in these descriptions, of course. 
Can you help me find them? For example, we could adventurous, unsociable, confident, bored. Can you help me? Independent and shy. Remember shy? Synonym of timid. Organized, practical, relaxed, spontaneous. They are all personality adjectives. Well, important is also an adjective, but not a personality adjective. Imaginative is a personality adjective, creative, thoughtful. When you pay attention to other people's feelings, realistic, cautious, when you're careful. Okay, I don't know if I have missed any. If I have, please say it in the chat so everybody can, can underline it too. Okay, so now I am going to page 17 on the same book. Look, uh, if you are, again, if you're in the bunch of photocopies, I just passed from this one, one more click and I am here. If you're in the book, you go to page 17. On page 17, we are going to work on formation of adjectives. In this box, what kind of words do you have in the box? Caution, love, meaning, comfort. What kind of words are these? Are they verbs? Are they adjectives? Are they adverbs? Are they nouns? What are they? Yes, these are nouns. And what you have to do is to transform them into adjectives using the correct what do we call this kind of word? This, no, it's not a word, this piece of word, let's say, this part of the word. Do you remember what we call them? These are suffixes. And I want you to put the nouns with the correct suffix so you form adjectives. Copy and complete the table with the adjective forms of the nouns in the box. So. I am going to give you three minutes to do this activity.
well. You ready? Tell me what you have completed in the first column. Well, sociable is already an example. What else? Write them in the chat, please. Share with your teacher your answers. We have comfortable, careful with the pronunciation, comfortable, comfortable. We have lovable. We have predict predictable. Bull. Be careful with that. Predictable. Predictable. Don't don't sound so Spanish. Predicta predictable. No. Predictable. Predictable. And then um, I'm going to put it here. Reliable. Oops. Uh, reliable. Good. Second column. What do we have? Well, adventurous, adventurous. Sorry, going back to the previous one, do you know the meaning of reliable? You know, when you can trust somebody, tell that person your secrets, you count on that person. Good. Now we have adventurous and what else? Cautious, right, when you're careful and generous. Good. Third column. Well, we have clearly realistic, dramatic, pessimistic, and what else? Sympathetic. Do you know the meaning of sympathetic? Remember, some classes ago, I reminded you of the use of the dictionary. Well, let's go back. You know, in your own virtual classroom, you've got here, your Cambridge Dictionary, a great tool to check vocabulary and whatever you need. So we have the pronunciation, sympathetic, if you need Sympathetic, to sympathetic, sympathetic. This adjective is used to describe someone who shows, especially by what they say, that they understand and care about someone else's suffering. Okay. In Spanish, we don't say simpático. In Spanish, we mean empático. Okay. Careful with that. This is a tricky word for Spanish speakers. Okay. Let's move on to column number four. We have practical, emotional, and what else? One more. There is one more. Personal. Good. Thoughtful, a person who thinks about others. And I'm going to highlight this one. Please remember that this suffix is only one L. It's a common mistake that you sometimes write two Ls. But no, remember, only one. When we have the suffix full, it's only one L. And also pay attention to the pronunciation. Try not to pronounce the U in the middle. Full, full. Can you do that? Thoughtful. Beautiful. What else? Um, sorry. Harmful. Hopeful. And meaningful. Of course, we know that when we have the, the suffix full, we can also have the opposite, which is what? The opposite of full. Yes, less. Very good. Good job. Well, why is it so important that we work on this kind of activity, that we uh, think of transforming uh, some words from one category into the other, in this case, from noun to adjective? Well, it's very important because in the exam we are going to hope we are going to have, sorry, what we called word formation, and that is part number three from the use of English paper. Mm -hmm. In this kind of activity, we are going to have to complete with the word given, but transforming it so it fits. It's important to think about the meaning, not just the grammar, because sometimes we need it to be in the negative, not in the positive. Sometimes you have to decide if an adjective is positive or negative. 
Before doing this activity, I want to read with you the strategy. Okay, for that, I am going to go to page 100, 201, 201 on your course books. Yes, it's right here. In the PDF file that you downloaded, it's right there. That is page number four in the PDF file. And let's read it together so we can discuss. What is being tested? Part four tests a range of grammatical structure as well as vocabulary and shows examiners that you can express yourself in different ways. Part three, word formation. What is being tested? Part three focuses on both vocabulary and grammar and tests your knowledge of how words are formed using prefixes and suffixes. You'll have to understand what kind of word is required in each verb, as we have discussed a moment ago, a noun, an adjective, an adverb, and you have to be able to form it Okay, you realize it's an adjective. Okay, but do you know that adjective form? Also, is it in the positive or in the negative? What do you have to do? Read a paragraph with eight gaps. That's very important. First, read the paragraph. Meaning is essential here. Use the word in capital letters at the end of each line with a gap to form a word which fits each gap. Write your answers on your answer sheet. Okay, so far so good. I'm going to move on to the strategy right here. Read the title and text quickly to get a general idea of what it is about. That's very important, guys. If you don't have a clear idea of what the text is about, you will not be able to realize when you need a negative or positive adjective. So it's very important to read the text carefully first and forget about the gaps at the first reading. Number two, read the text again. This time, stop at each gap. Now we will work on the blanks. Think about whether the missing word is positive or negative, plural or singular, a noun, a verb, adjective or adverb. This is very important to highlight because this is basically all you have to think about. Use the words before and after each gap to help you decide. Write the correct form of the word in the gap. The correct form, remember that if you make a spelling mistake, you will be penalized and the whole answer will be wrong. Read the text again to make sure your answers make sense and the words are spelled correctly. Finally, transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Okay, any questions? Do you find this activity difficult? You have been doing this activity in Senior Upper and in Pre-First. Would you consider this one difficult? Tell your teacher. Please. Okay, now I am going back to the vocabulary page and we are going to do this activity. How well do you know yourself? First, I want you to read the text and tell me in two or three lines what it is about. I am going to give you two minutes to answer that. What is this text about? I don't want you to be completing the blanks. Is that clear? 
So just read it and tell your teacher what the text is about. Go. Okay, you can start sharing your summaries of the text in the chat. In two or three lines, what is the, the, this text about? The main idea. How well do you know yourself? When trying to understand our own or other people's, we need a noun, an abstract noun in this case, behavior, we tend to oversimplify things. Guys, behavior can be spelled like this, O U, or also like this. But this is American spelling. Remember what we discussed in the first lesson. If you use American spelling, you have to be consistent. You can't be writing British, American, American, British. Okay, so be careful with that. This book is British English, so you will find British spelling, but be careful if you use American. Now I'm going to give you three minutes to complete the rest of the text. Three or four minutes. Okay, complete it, take your time, and then we will share together in the chat.
Okay. Are you ready to check the activity? Remember, I expect you to help me with your answers in the chat, yes? Oops, this is too big. Okay. How well do you know yourself? When trying to understand our own or other people's behavior, we tend to oversimplify things. We use one or two adjectives to sum each other up. We think, one friend, we think of one friend as having a generally positive or negative in this case, a generally mm -mm, and positive outlook. We have and joining these two words, so it has to be the same polarity. It has to be also a positive word. And also an adjective, so they, they form a couple, let's say. The answer is hopeful and positive outlook. While another friend, while, contrast, while another friend is considered mm -mm, a negative, good, pessimistic and negative. We discussed these adjectives in the previous activities. Of course, in... We need a noun, an abstract noun. In reality, none of us is so easily defined. The truth is that we are all made up of inconsistent and contradictory, but we have two adjectives, so we need a noun, so those adjectives make sense. And be careful, make sure they are singular or plural characteristics okay contradictory characteristics we can be serious and reliable with our colleagues at work but in our personal relationships at home we are more what predictable or unpredictable what do you think and emotional. Remember what I told you in number one and two? And has to join two things that are the same, because if they are different, we use but, we use a contradictory, uh, right? In this case, they have to be the same polarity. So if you are emotional, are you predictable or unpredictable? Unpredictable. Unpredictable and emotional. With some friends, we can be very cautious. While we are, while contrast, cautious, the contrast is adventurous. These adjectives were in the quiz, remember? While we are adventurous thrill seekers with other friends. Do you remember this term, prefers thrill seekers, when you are all the time looking for excitement? So can people be neatly, neatly, prolijamente, neatly divided into personality types? Or we alter our personality according to the mm -mm -mm in our changing moods and situations. What about number seven? We have an article, the. So this gives you the, they, this gives us the idea that then we need a noun, difference. Or plural. Singular or plural, what do you think? Yes, plural. According to the differences in our changing moods and situations, perhaps the idea of a fixed personality it's, is just a mm -mm -mm, misconception. Misconception, something you believe it's true, but it's actually not. So is this a positive or negative idea, a negative concept. So, meaningless misconception. Maybe we can never truly understand ourselves or other people. Okay, good job. Questions? I am going to show you like this. So, if you weren't able to complete one of the answers, take a second to do so. 
remember, you don't have to print this, just write your answers in your folder, and when you have the book, you can copy them. And of course, you can watch the video as many times as you want. I'm giving you time to discuss with your teacher if you have a doubt, or if you think another option should be the correct one. Okay, let's continue working. Well, I am back at the virtual classroom to show you that we will continue working on the course book. Remember on this link that says course book pages, you have all the pages that we are going to use today. At the moment, I am on page 19 in the course book. We are going to continue working with adverbs. I need you to tell me what an adverb is. What is the function of the adverb? We know the adjective modifies the noun. So what does the adverb modify? Can you tell me? Can you tell me in the chat? Yes, definitely. The adverb modifies the verb. Here we have five, four sentences, A, B, C, and D, and two answers, two questions, I'm sorry. Which adverbs are irregular? First, before doing that, we have to identify the adverbs. So, which adverbs are irregular? Take a moment to think about it. Have a look at the four sentences. As I said before, first we have to identify, identify the adverbs. So, in A, what is the adverb? Part. Well. Slowly. And hardly. Very good. Which of these are irregular? We know that when something is irregular, it means that it doesn't follow the rule. Which of these four adverbs are irregular, guys? Hard and well are the two adverbs that are irregular. We know that because hardly and slowly do have the suffix that adverbs usually have. Okay, so hard and well do not have that suffix. We have been discussing suffixes today. They do not have the typical adverb suffix. So we can say that they don't follow the rule, so they are irregular. Which words can be both an adverb and an adjective? Which of these four words that we have underlined can work as both adverb or adjective? Well, same answer, hard and well. Depending on their use, they can be used as an, as an adverb or as an adjective. And what about meaning? What's the difference here? They will have to work very hard to make their marriage work. It can have hardly any impact on large families. What's the difference in meaning here? Because the root, la raíz, is the same word, hard. But we say that both are adverbs. Hard is an adverb and hardly is an adverb too. But what's the difference in meaning? To work very hard. To make something with difficulty, right? Hard with difficulty. But what about hardly? It can have hardly any impact on large family. Hardly. Hardly means not a large amount. It can have hardly any impact on large family, meaning not much impact. Okay. Now you have to choose the correct option. Can you do that? Sorry, that's too big. I know. Um, I am going to give you some minutes 
for you to work on that activity. Remember, all these is in the virtual classroom. The PDF file is there for you to use. Don't worry if you don't have the book. Okay. I hardly know my brother or I hardly know my brother because he's so much older than me. I hardly, meaning I don't know him very much. I try hard to get on with my brothers or I try hardly to get on with my brothers and sisters. Tell me, too hard or too hardly? Tell me in the chat. I try hard with a lot of difficulty, with a lot of effort. Number three, he's been feeling depressed late or lately. Three, late or three, lately. Vote in the chat. I feel like in one of those TV shows where, where you have to send your answer to by SMS to 2020. <laughs> he's been feeling depressed lately meaning these uh, past days. If we say late, we mean like you were not on time and that's not what we mean in this case. My mother had children lately in life or late in life? For lately, for late. Both, please. Late in life, good. My parents live closely or close to me? Closely or close? Close to me. If we say close, we mean distance. But if we say closely, what do we mean? If we say closely, we mean in deep detail, with a lot of detail. Look at number six. We studied the results of the test. Close or closely? Six close or six closely? Yes, closely, very good. Um, make sure that if it's necessary, you watch this part again and you write down the comments that you need. Yes, remember this is important. Okay, on the other hand, we have the extreme adjectives. You know, at this point in our life, we can't continue using simple adjectives. There are situa situations that um, make it necessary for us to use more complex words. What about difficult? What would you match difficult with? Difficult A, enormous, difficult, terrified, exhausted, impossible, brilliant or furious. Tell me in the chat, 1A, 1B, 1C, whatever you consider. Okay, yeah, impossible. What about intelligence? 2A, 2B, 2C. Very good, brilliant. What about angry? If you're angry, how do you feel? Furious, yes. What about frightened? Terrified and tired? Exhausted. Oh, this is my favorite. Exhausted. I love coming back home and say, oh, darling, I'm exhausted. What about number six? Big, enormous, wonderful. Okay, you are familiar with all of these adjectives, but let's be honest, sometimes you forget to use the ones that are more complex. I'm going to move on to activity number four now. So, why have I started with uh, talking about adverbs? Well, the reason is because there are some adjectives that can only be used with some adverbs, not with all of them. Let's have a look at the adverbs we have in the box. Which adverbs in the box give the sentence a similar meaning? So, with which adverb can we replace quite in number one? 
in this case, we can say instead of quite, fairly. In Spanish, we would say like, apenas. What about number two? Instead of really, what can we replace really with? What do you think? We can use very instead of really in this case. And in number three, what can we replace that really with? Not with very. We have already used it completely or absolutely. Number four. Okay, we can use it again in this case. Very. Number five. Absolutely. Well, in this case, we have also to change the, the article. He's an absolutely amazing person. And what about number six? What can we replace quite with? In number six, we can use fairly, as we did in number one, or a bit. Both are correct. Now, now that you have these sentences done with me, let's try to, watching at the examples, complete the rules. So, really or very can be used with an adjective in order to intensify the meaning. Which of these intensify the meaning in your opinion? Really is the one that intensifies the meaning. Really cautious, really amazing. What about number two? Completely and absolutely or really and very are only used with extreme adjectives. Only used with extreme adjectives. If we have a look at number three, impossible is an extreme adjective. So we know that these two are for extreme, only for extreme adjectives. Really and very can be used with any, but completely and absolutely only with extreme adjectives. Please remember that only with extreme adjectives. And what about the third rule? Which one is only used when making a criticism with adjectives with a negative meaning? This one has got a negative connotation. A bit, yes, a bit has got a negative connotation. Okay, guys, this is the end of this lesson. I am going back to the virtual classroom because I want to, I am clicking on classwork and homework. This is everything we have done today. We have worked on personality, word formation, and adverbs and extreme adjectives. This is going to be your homework. You will have to upload an audio describing the person you take after in your family, to take after, that you are similar to. Use the personality adjectives work with in class and speak for at least one minute. Look, I hope you remember how to upload an audio, but you have to click here. And here you will have a button to send your audio, okay? And then you have pages from the Exam Maximizer book to continue practicing these topics. Make sure you do what you are asked for. For example, in page number 12, only adjectives. In page 13, only use of English. And on page 14, only activity one and two from grammar. These pages have been uploaded here, class six, pages from the Exam Maximizer, okay? Remember your teacher is in the chat and anything you need, you talk to us and we will give you a hand. See you soon, people. Have a great week.